So depending on how you pay your bills, you could be missing out on a huge amount of cash every single year. Maybe 50 quid, 60 quid, maybe 100 quid or more. Depends obviously how much your bills are. So what I wanna share with this video is the ways, the tricks, the different accounts and cards that you can use that can maybe get you up to 3% off your bills, back off your bills. Let's start off with energy bills. Probably the one that's gonna be amongst the most expensive, if not the most expensive bill that comes out every single month. If you are paying for this by a direct debit every single month, and this is probably the best way to pay for energy because you will get a discount for using direct debit rather than paying based on what your usage is every single month. I would do this via a specialist current account, a cashback current account from Santander. They actually have two of these. They have the 123 and the 123 Lite. I have done a whole video comparing them, so do check that out from a while ago. It gives you all the basics, a bit more information. But fundamentally, ignore the 123 account, okay? That Chuck that one away. If you've got that already, downgrade to the 123 Lite because there was a fee with both of them. It's five pounds with the 123, but only two pounds a month with the 123 Lite. Uh, and you do not need the extras that come with a five pound account. The two pound a month to so 24 pounds a year, you pay that, you get cash back on the majority of the bills. And this is primarily, I'll come back to this as we go for the bills, primarily this is gonna be the best one for your payments. With energy, with your gas and electricity, you will get 2% back every single month. There is a cap on how much you can earn every single month at 2%. The most you can get is five pounds. Uh, so to the direct debit of 250 quid, that would get you five pounds. So obviously if you have a lower direct debit, a smaller direct debit, then your monthly cash back will be smaller. If you have higher than 250 quid every single month, then obviously you're still gonna be capped at that five quid. So what might be the best thing to do there is have a direct debit for 250 quid. And if you do need to pay more, use one of the other options, which I'll come to later, a cash back debit or credit card to pay the rest, to top it up afterwards, make a manual payment to max how much cash back you're gonna get. Or you might go, just for ease, don't worry, I'm just gonna pay uh, two, more than 250 quid, but happy with that five pounds back because that is 60 quid a year. So we're saying 24 pounds as a fee every year. You're still gonna be making 26 pound profit just if you pay the energy bills, obviously assuming that your direct debit is 250 quid. Obviously, if it is less, you won't make as much. You do have to be careful here, as with anything else with the Santander 123 Lite account, which I'll be talking about in a minute, that your provider is listed. And this can sometimes get a little bit complicated because although most of the big firms, they'll be on there, sometimes the energy firms will be kind of white labeling. So what that means is they're doing everything in the background, but you're actually getting it through someone else. A good example of that is who I get my energy with, that's m and Energy, Marks and Spencer's Energy. They actually are octopus. So m and Energy does not appear on Santander's little search box it has on its website, which incidentally, I'll put a link below this video to an article with more information about what I'm talking about with all these different links. So you can go to this kind of little search box and find out, but it doesn't say m and Energy is there but it does get the cash back because I get the cash back every single month from this account. So uh, just do check that you are uh, taking part, of your, your company, your business is part of it, but it can be a bit complicated. So if it is uh, part of a large organization, larger energy firm, see if they're there and you should be okay. Now this obviously assumes, as I say, that you have a more traditional meter that you are paying by direct debit, that you're allowed to do this. If you're on a prepayment meter, obviously you cannot pay by direct debit, you cannot take advantage of the cash back here. So instead, I would suggest that you use the best cash back debit card, which right now is from Chase Bank. Obviously that can change, but they give 1% for the first 12 months. So you can do this for a year. After a year, well, they have extended it for uh, early customers to make it about 18 months. They may well do that again, they may stop it. It's hard to say right now, um, but that 1% is the best you're going to get at the moment. Alternatively, as long as you can use a credit card for topping up your prepayment bill, and you've got to be careful because obviously most people who are on prepayment meters are probably because they haven't got the money. So having a credit card might not be the best route for you in terms of budgeting because you've got to make sure you clear it completely every single month. But if you're comfortable with it, then the American Express uh, Nectar credit card also gives 1%. Not everywhere would take that. If that is the case, then maybe you want to look at the next best pick, which I would say is currently the Barclay card Avios one. That will earn you Avios points, but you can convert them into Nectar points and they work out at 0.8%, as long as you're happy to use a Nectar point in Sainsbury's and Argos and places like that. They're the best ones right now. I'm not going to go into detail about all the different cards right now because things will change. I, every single month, I do an update on the best credit cards uh, and the best deals and best promos, so make sure you check that out, uh, what the latest I've got there to you about the best options. So that's your energy bill, getting money back on those, well, well worth doing that. The next most expensive bill, I'm gonna imagine is probably your council tax, right? Depending where you live, the size of your house, but it can get quite sizable. Now the Santander 123 Lite account will give you cash back on that as well. 
only 1%. And there's also that five pound cap every single month. Now, 1% is gonna be fine, but in that 1% section, there are also other bills I'll come to later. So you will want to just kind of check that you're making the most, you're not going to uh, put too much in that section and just getting a maximum of five pounds that you're not being kind of split off uh, where you might be better off paying for some of these bills elsewhere. And we'll, we'll talk about those in a second. Now, again, uh, this is the best way, I think absolutely, because if you are paying uh, not via direct debit for your council tax, you want to pay for it manually, you are going to encounter some problems here. First of all, that Chase Bank account I told you about just now, it doesn't give cash back on tax payments. Now, this is a bit of a gray area. Is council tax tax? Because really what it's talking about here is payments to HMRC, big, big payments, which could cost a lot of money. But it might not be that the systems are smart enough to know that this is actually really it's a different kind of thing. Council tax is more of a bill than a kind of, you know, a VAT bill or a self-assessment bill. I, as I understand it, I've asked for confirmation for Chase, they didn't provide it, but as I understand it, council tax does not qualify for the 1% cash back via Chase, which is a disappointment. Uh, you can look at the credit cards then. Uh, again, this varies from council to council. Most of them do not accept American Express. And a lot of them don't even allow credit cards. So you may well be faced with a situation that actually your council will not let you pay via a cashback credit card at all. If that's the situation, then you aren't going to be able to get anything. So really the best way to go, so go back to that Santander 123 Light account and pay by direct debit. Now water bills, probably going to be one of your smaller bills every single month. And again, sticking, I told you it was going to come back quite a few times. The Santander 123 Light is my top pick here because you get 3% back. This is the most cashback you're going to get on your bills full stop. Uh, again, that five pound cap's not gonna be an issue because 166 pounds is what you'd need to be paying for water every single month for 3% of that to actually go above five pounds. So you're gonna get that nailed in. You could potentially use the Chase card here. Maybe the water company will accept credit cards well if you want to make those manual payments. I don't think it's gonna be a problem and exclusion for Chase because this isn't something, it's just a bill. It's not a debt, it's not a tax payment. So you should be absolutely fine with that. Broadband, again, 1% via the one, two, three light account. So if you've got your bills coming through there, your direct debit coming out every single month, then well worth doing that. But remember I said about how you've got a few different things in that first 1% section of the one, two, three light, which might push you into that 1% cap. That comes into play here because broadband, probably not too expensive, but you've got that bundled in maybe with an expensive TV and maybe with your mobile as well. These are the other things that will get you 1%. And then you might start to be getting towards uh, that kind of amount where you are going to sort of not earn your maximum potential at 1%. With broadband companies, you are also very able to make manual payments if you want to. And in fact, some mobile com uh, broadband companies, now TV is, now broadband is a good example here, don't let you pay by direct debit, but they will accept cards. So I would go back to that Chase debit card at 1%, uh, or if they accept an Amex, that Amex Nectar is the highest paying one there. Now let's talk about pay TV here actually, because this is something which, although you can earn 1% for the Santander 123 Lite account. I don't, because I don't have Sky or Virgin, because as I've spoken about in other videos, I don't think it's worth it at all. The amount you're paying for those services, you are going to be uh, well, well, well overpaying compared to what you can get those same channels for by the likes of Now. I've got a whole video explaining how Now TV works. Check that one out, see if it's for you. If so, look at canceling your Virgin, look at canceling your Sky TV, so you aren't paying big contracts every single month for like 18 months or something, give you more flexibility. So absolutely ditch that. But if you are committed to it, again, you can get 1% via the 123 Light account. Now the next one is also 1% via the 123 Light account, and this is your mobile phone bill. And in fact, you could use the 1% from cash Chase for this to get the 1% cash back, or you could use the Amex, because most of these phone providers, they will accept a credit card for the payment as well. Uh, you might have to still man remember to do this manually, but you can do it. However, there is an alternative here, one I've not mentioned so far, and this is something called Airtime Rewards. This is a cashback site. It's an app which you uh, connect to your Visa and MasterCard debit card. Sadly, uh, not uh, Amex, but other credit cards will be on there, but Visa and MasterCard, app debit and credit cards. And if you shop with those connected cards at one of the participating retailers, and there are some big names on there, like Boots, like Primark, if you shop at those, you will get some cash back to your uh, Airtime Rewards account. And you can combine this with the likes of Quidco and Top Cashback and other cashback sites, potentially, if you're shopping online. So it's not an alternative, it's as well as. And obviously, if that underlying card you're using is a cashback card, so for example, Chase um, or the uh, Barclay card Avios, you'll also be able to get 
those points, that cash back on the card, as well as the stuff to the airtime reward. So it's a great way, if you're shopping as retailers, to get some extra money. The thing about the money you earn on airtime rewards is you can only use it as credit towards your mobile phone bill. So what I would suggest is here, make sure you're signed up to that. There is a small £1.50 welcome bonus you can get, and I'll link to that again in the article below. So click through to that for more information. Sign up to that. Use it where relevant at the shops you're going to shop at normally. Same with any cashback site. And in the credit you get, make sure you apply that. You have to manually go in and apply that to your bill. Do that first of all. Whether you're going to earn enough to pay for your bill every single month depends on how much you shop. There are some bonuses that Airtime Rewards often have every month or so, which might top it up by two or three quid. And also how much your bill is. I don't know if it's going to come together, but that will be much, much better to do that and then pay off for anything that's left via direct debit to your Santander123 Lite account or using the uh, Chase or Yarmulke card to, to pay it manually and get a little bit extra on top. What I should say is though, sadly, Airtime Rewards does only work on the big networks, EE, Vodafone 3, O2, Gift Gaff, maybe one or two others. So if you have shopped around and got one of those sims which are probably cheaper overall, you might be missing out, but it's certainly worth having a look. Now they're the ones which are covered by the Santander 123 Lite account, right? These next ones, you will not get any cash back on them. You might think they're a bill, but you will not get money from the Santander account for them. So you are looking now at using the best debit or credit cash back cards. The primary one here I think you're probably paying quite a lot for are your sort of streaming bills, whether it's TV or music, Spotify, Netflix, all that kind of stuff. When you pay for these, it's not by direct debit, it is by the long card number. So just make sure that the long card number that you're using is one that offers cash back. You could also, I know I've spoken before about this in the video about wanting to get extra direct debits for when you're bank switching. Do check that out if you haven't seen that before. PayPal is a way that you can do that. So a direct debit, for PayPal, counts towards bank switching, but then you can connect your cashback card to PayPal and use PayPal to pay for these so streaming services as well. So that is an alternative, but fundamentally just make sure you're getting something from these things because you know it's a little bit every single month that will add up over the year, particularly if you have a music one and a video one and maybe a few other bits coming through the year. Now insurance is something that we probably only pay for once a year, but it is quite a hefty bill when it comes through. Home insurance, car insurance, maybe travel insurance as well. Now this is something which is excluded from Chase's cashback. So you will not be able to use Chase to earn money back. You can obviously use your Chase card to pay for those, but you won't get the money back. So this is where the credit cards come into play again. Now if they accept American Express, that's generally the best paying one, but that Barclay card, Abios is also a really good bet. If they do not accept a credit card or don't accept American Express, for example, do just check if PayPal is an option there as well, because you might be able to work around it there and get the cash back from them there. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit like. Leave me a comment below on how you earn cash back on your bills. Let me know if there's anything I've missed that could help people out as well. And make sure you check out these videos right here to make the most of your money.